300 AD, when the Renaissance started in Europe, you had the Middle Ages all that time. People were suppressed. The Catholic Church dominated things. They lied to people about their salvation. Tell them about purgatory. Praise ye the Lord somebody. The people pay the priests to pray their loved ones out of purgatory. According to them to get into heaven. But you got to understand after that, if you didn't make it with Jesus, there's just hell you're going to go. No other further, nowhere else. Praise ye the Lord. But they amassed unto themselves wealth. See, and so truth in the Bible were hidden. And so one day God moved upon Martin Luther. Got to understand and when he came, glory to God, God touched his heart. He was a Catholic priest. But he couldn't understand why they were doing certain things to folks. Are you understanding that? So he started seeking God. And so he came across the script. Just shall live by faith. Oh hallelujah somebody. And so he started questioning all that they taught him. And so as it were a new period started in the earth. Religiously also and industrially speaking. Praise ye the Lord somebody. So what they call the middle ages came to an end when the renaissance started. And so men begin to explore different kind of knowledge and men start growing intellectually because they had reached a point where they were stagnant. They weren't going up, they weren't going down and they just reached a point. What the Pope said was what the Pope said and what the Catholic Church said was what they followed. But thanks be to God. Praise be the Lord. You can't run with God, you hear me? If you're evil, you can't beat God or you can't run with God. So in spite of what came with the Renaissance, and we had a whole lot of famous people came out of it, but there was something else that happened. See that? So people like of England, see, who wanted to translate the Bible. We have the King James Version now, see that? And the Catholic Church had prevented what? Anybody from translating a Bible. Are you understand what I'm saying? And those who tried it, they killed them. Praise be the Lord. Except they ought to ordain it, people would have been killed to translate the Bible. Because they wanted to speak Latin to everybody and everybody go to church here in Latin and nobody understood a thing that they were saying. But thanks be to God. See a renaissance came 1300 and men, glory to God, get to know who the is. Give the Lord a praise somebody. Give him glory. Give him glory somebody. Give him glory again. Give him glory again. So God is ushering a what? A rebirth. So maybe you don't know it, hear, heard it all, but the prophet tells us that there is a seven year period of blessing that is coming. Praise the Lord somebody. But he said to us, we got to learn how to walk with God. Learn how to live with each other and learn how to love one another. And you got to understand if it is not done, you can't inherit anything that God said. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. So if you're mean-spirited, you got to get to the idea. We got to learn how to walk with God. And so he said to us, you have to learn during this time to save money. Now, you keep quiet now, right? But you got to understand, and he's not talking about saving because rainy day is coming, although that is important. But he's telling us that if you have nothing put away, you can't get any increase on it. Are you understanding that? Just like if you don't invest in God, don't expect any returns. You got to get it. See that? Praise the Lord, somebody. In other words, then, if you have your savings somewhere, get it? He's telling you God is going to move in the earth. So blessings will come to you just because you have what you have right there. If you didn't have it right there, nothing could what? Come to you. Praise ye the Lord somebody. So you got to understand God work what? Miracles, signs and wonders. And so there are times when people see money turn up in their bank accounts. Because crooks are doing all kind of stuff. Are you understanding that? 
And then when God places it in there and things start happening and you go and you see it, you got to understand if you take all that is there or take out some, they're willing to take all the rest to take it elsewhere. And nobody will ever ask you a question or prosecute. Why is that so? Because somebody in the bank will have to answer. So they take out the rest quickly and nobody asks you a thing. But if you didn't have an account there, not a thing would happen. Well, I tell you, they keep quiet. Well, let me put it another way for you then. Anybody remember the children of Israel? God said when they were leaving Egypt, because of all the labor that you gave to the Egyptians, Hallelujah, somebody. God said, borrow everything that you can borrow. And he said, make sure you borrow things like gold and silver and all that kind of stuff. That when you are leaving, take it as you pay. So he didn't send you to go borrow no clay pot. Can't melt down and do anything with it. Praise the Lord, somebody. But he sent them to borrow what? Enduring things like gold and like silver. Praise ye the Lord. Things that they can what? Hold on to and use later. Tangible what? Thing. Praise the Lord somebody. So understand then. And, and some people said. Well oftentimes I, I will even hear folks said. What, what they said. Um, things are getting better. What's the song? Uh, I see money coming. Right? And everybody sing that. I don't sing that. I see wealth coming. See, money is just a byproduct of what? Wealth. But when you have wealth, money will always what? Come. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Glory to God, somebody. So turn your Bibles to Hebrews 10. Keep it right there. So one of the things that he said is that the Lord is going to make us one body. Hello. That's what God is going to work towards, that we become one body. He also says that God will act holiness from us. Sanctification. So you've got to see where you are now. You've got to keep yourself holy. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to walk in sanctification. You've got to separate yourself from other folks. Hallelujah, somebody. So he said that today they are pushing you for inclusion. I am a oneness Pentecostal. Baptized in the name of Jesus. Are you understanding that? Praise ye the Lord. Speaking in tongues as the Holy Ghost give utterance. I can't change who I am. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. I believe there is only one God. I believe God is not a trinity of persons. But God is one God. Praise ye the Lord. And he manifests in what? Father, Son and Holy Ghost. But not three persons but what? One God, manifestation, like a tree, when you cut off the limb of a tree, is the same tree. So there can't be inclusion with me. I can pray with you, do some stuff with you, but you got to understand, I am who I am. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. So they are pushing now for inclusion. And so what you find is that everybody's telling you we all serve the same God and we all want the same thing. Maybe that is so, but how do we get there? It has to be the Bible way and no other way. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Glory to God. Give him praise. Give him praise again. Give him praise again. So you may ask me the question. Does that mean that God doesn't work among Trinitarians? Yes, he does. See, they still belong to God, but God is working for people to come to the knowledge of the truth because he understands the history that is gone. That's why some people maintain those things still. A lot of people behind it. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Hallelujah, Jesus. So you got to get to the point where you are looking for what? Absolute truth. You got to get to the point where you become the living word. It is flowing outside of you. You got to get to the point where you understand why people do what they do, even in churches, but you have to become holy and separate. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. 
So you got to get to the point where you realize what holiness is. It is important that you know because wearing long dresses is good enough. Some people wear them long but still show everything. Split all you know. Dress is long like what I have on but the split is right up here. As they go like this you see it. Well that's not the only thing that is holiness. See, we are Pentecostal, so we tend to talk about that all the time. Those things are important. But what you got to understand then, the only reason why those things are manifested is because of what is inside here. I'm a male, and I don't like nobody to see nothing. See me, you see my clothes on. I don't like nothing tight on me either. I don't want to create no impression. Only one person will see anything of me is my wife. Nobody else. And there's nobody else can point no finger that they ever see me. Praise the Lord, somebody. But it's what is inside you. So if you become the living word, then you got to understand holiness will what? Just exude out of you. Praise the Lord. You will look at how you're walking. You will look at how you cover yourself. You will see what is appropriate, what is inappropriate. And those that are, you will what? Get away from it. You will consider your friends. And you would weigh their conversation. You would understand whether they are for God or whether they are not for God. And when you find out they are not so much for God, you need to what? Split. That sounds rough, right? Well, I could find several scriptures in the Bible to show you why you need to. Because you got to understand... They say, when I was growing up, show me a company, I'll tell you who you are. I used to say, that's not true. But I lived to realize my grandmother was right. Hallelujah, somebody. So women, you get it? Or they cover their head, however they cover it. But you got to understand, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said a woman must not pray prophesy with her head uncovered. You get it? And so we cover our heads here. And when you go to other places where they're down, some of us get what? Influenced. They will say they're prophesying and their heads are not covered. And some of us will see it and think that is okay. Well, I will tell you this. A man can commit fornication or adultery right now and come to church having no conscience, still speaking in tongues. 